I've never done a live stream before. So when I was asked if I wanted to give a live robotic haircut at one of the biggest live stream events of the year, I said, how about instead of using the original robot, we totally redesign it, rewrite the software, give it some new skills, and attempt the first haircut ever on a famous YouTube personality live. I mean, what could go wrong, right? This crazy contraption that I'm sitting in, this is the new robot. And redesigning it wasn't totally up to me. The old robot had some concerns, mostly related to the scissors. Oh my <laughs> Another issue with the old robot is that it's now a pumpkin carver. It's a long story. I'm gonna just spoil it. This was a stupid plan. Live streams are insanely risky. We messed up a lot of perfectly good hair and I ended up having to experiment on myself. Oh my gosh. But it's gonna take a bit of work for you to truly understand the depths of the stupidity. So let's start at the beginning. I'm super excited by the chance to redesign this. The last robot had a few problems. The biggest one being that you got a mullet, whether you wanted it or not. It would also leave a ridiculous amount of hair around your ears. This is a chance to fix those issues, but while we're at it, it's also a chance to take things to the next level. It is a robot, so how about cutting a pattern into the side of your hair? That'd be pretty cool. Aside from that, Pat, there's also me. It's been what? five months since I had a haircut. We're definitely gonna put me in the robot and take care of this problem as well. I'm also going to see if I can find anyone else to stick in the robot because the more the merrier, right? This is all that's left of the first robot and it was a pretty immature design. When you take something immature and thrust it into the limelight, it's gonna come with baggage. And this robot was no exception. It was a robotic arm that could move anywhere on your head by rotating around it, moving up and down, and then rotating in a bunch of different ways so that it could point towards your head. On the end was a mechanism that could detect where the head is, grab your hair, and then cut it to whatever length you want. If you do this on every point of your head, theoretically you have the haircut that you want. The new robot has totally different parts, but it operates in a similar way to the old one. It just does it better and fixes a lot of issues. The old robot was fundamentally flawed. It couldn't cut below a certain height, and this resulted in an automatic mullet, which is pretty awesome, but it would be nice if it was optional. And the fix for this is easy. Flip the robot upside down. Now you can reach as low as you want. If you made the arm longer, it could easily be a back hair cutting robot. The old robot had these dangerous scissors. The main risk was grabbing your ear and then giving it a little snip. I didn't want to become Holyfield at the hands of Muhammad Ali bot, so I added extra space around my ears to keep the scissors away. This leaves a ton of hair around your ears, which knocks a bunch of points off your IQ. The scissors are also limited in how short they can cut, and they're pretty slow. We're gonna swap out the scissors for high-powered trimmers. These can cut right over the ears, they can cut really short, and they're fast. Trimmers also make it easier to do a tool change. In this case, to drop in a second trimmer that'll do the pattern cutting. This robot has one other issue that you might not expect. This tube was just the worst. It caused so many problems. It would kink, it would stall the motors. I actually wrote software to try to detect situations where the hose would get caught or get kinked, which is horrible. It's the last thing you wanna be doing when you're cutting hair live. I've been staring at this hose for so long and I cannot find a way to arrange it where it won't happen. If the tube has a problem flexing, just don't have the tube. So if a thing is causing me a problem, remove that thing and I won't have a problem. Yeah, exactly. Don't you think I would've tried that? All right, the thing that was causing the problem has been removed and I think the hose issue is a thing of the past. This is a special pivot that you can vacuum through. Putting this on all the joints means that there's no hose to kink. Problem solved. This new robot is super cool, but a new robot like this comes with serious risk of not working all the time, and a live stream, you get one chance. If it breaks, that's it. I'll fail in front of like, I don't know, 10 or 15 million people, and it's a lot harder than you might think to guarantee that something like this will work all the time. Almost every single part is essential. That means if even a single wire breaks, it won't be able to function properly. You can think of it as if each part of the robot forms a link in a chain. If one link goes, the entire chain fails. The more links there are in the chain, the more opportunities there are for something to break. And when you look at the mathematics of this chain, you'll see that I'm even more screwed than you probably think. Imagine that each part of the robot has a one in 10 chance of failure whenever I do a haircut. It's like rolling a 10 sided die. And if I get a specific number, like a one, then that part fails. The problem is the way that these probabilities combine. Remember, if a single part fails, the entire robot fails. It's like rolling 50 dice and trying to not roll a one. Very hard to do. 
In fact, if I roll the dice 200 times, I should only expect it to happen once. Even if the parts have a 1 in 1000 chance of failure, which would correspond to a die with 1000 sides, I should still expect to roll a failure 1 out of 20 times. This cold, hard statistical reality is the most likely thing to screw me over. There's lots of parts that need to be really reliable. This is made even worse by something else I'm going to get screwed by. Infant mortality. You might think if I make a thing, the odds of it failing are something like this. It's reliable when it's first made, but as it starts to wear out, the odds of it failing go up. But in reality, the odds of failure often look like this. Things tend to fail a lot early in life. This is what's called infant mortality. The things that get past this tend to have pretty good reliability until they get old and die peacefully in their sleep. This curve is so common it has a name, which is a bathtub curve for pretty obvious reasons. You're probably wondering what the deal is and why this happens. When you make something, there are a lot of ways to do it wrong. And when that happens, the thing that you made either doesn't work at all, or it fails really fast. You can be sure I'm going to have plenty of assembly issues. This means I need to do lots of extra testing to get through all the infant mortality issues. If I don't, I'm virtually guaranteed to fail. All right, I'm about to do tons of haircut robot testing. Meet me in the bathtub. That actually might not be the smartest thing to do. Getting this done is really tight because I had two other videos that I was making, but I left several days before I fly out to do all the rigorous testing. All right, I'm finally done with the lock picking video. We're gonna publish it and see how it does out in the world by itself. All right, this is the best part. After all that work, finally get to watch it and see what people think. Tons of people want you to send it to the lock picking lawyer. I'm definitely gonna send it to the lock picking lawyer, don't worry. Well, there's no time for relaxing. I gotta go test this robot. Do you know where my Mac is? Isn't that dead? Oh. All the code to do a haircut is on the computer that I fried cutting pumpkins. I actually have about 80 hours till I fly out. That's a long time. That's like two full work weeks of work. If anything, this is for the best because the code I had before was pretty terrible and this is my chance to do it the right way. So much for testing, but I can't test anything without code. So that really wasn't too bad. It took me about 30 hours. The general idea behind the software is very similar to the last haircutting robot. So there's a 3D head that I paint the length of hair I'd like to cut on. How long the hair is corresponds to how dark the color is. There's a second 3D model of a head that I paint the angle I'd like the cut to be done at. And then I take both those heads and compute the series of locations I should cut with. This is very similar to the way that the previous robot worked. If you wanna understand better, you can check out the other video. There's a new piece of functionality, which is the ability to take a logo and project it onto the head and then use that to compute a series of cuts to realize it. I'll get into the details of how that works later when I'm a little bit less tired and I have a little bit more time. Remember all that stuff I was saying about getting past infant mortality? It actually applies to code as well. So when the code is new, there's gonna be a lot of bugs. You have to work through them and test it before you get to the kind of reliable zone. And I still haven't tested the hardware. And we got like 40 something hours until I fly out. It is crunch time. Oh, hey, are you tired? Well, it's time for everyone's favorite thing, integration hell. This is when everything that can break, breaks. And first up, why in the world is the angle of this servo wrong? Everything looks fine and I just don't have time. So I'm gonna do a firmware patch. It's just gonna correct for it. So it'll go to the right angle that I want, but I would really like to understand this one. It can really subtly break stuff and just screw me in the future. All right, now why does it cut the top of my head at the right height, but not the sides? I have been trying to solve this since like midnight. My brain isn't working very well, so I'm gonna go sleep for a couple hours and hopefully I'll wake up with the solution because we've got like 18 hours or something until I fly out. So I got some sleep and I finally found the problem. I would really like to understand this one. It can really subtly break stuff and just screw me in the future. I at least called it, right? <sighs> Such a waste of time. It's about 12 hours until I fly out and I still haven't done a haircut. The uh, stress is really starting to get to me, I'm not gonna lie. My plan has been to give myself a haircut before flying out, but at this point there's no time to fix it if I butcher it. No one wants to be seen in front of millions of people with terrible hair. Even if I dared, I don't think it's in the cards. This last issue is tough. These three switches are used to detect when the robot contacts your head. This is how it knows where your skull is so it can cut to the right length. It turns out heads are a little bit pointier than you would think, and if you hit them at just the right angle, none of the switches will get triggered and the robot will plow into your head. This keeps happening to me and it's pretty annoying. 
I've been trying to come up with a software fix where I strategically rotate the head of the cutter to an angle that will guarantee that the switch will hit. I'm just too tired for this right now. I thought I had an awesome solution using metal rods to extend the limit switches, but the problem is nothing else worked. For some reason, it just wouldn't suck the hair up into the tube, so we're pretty much out of time. We're gonna do a really dirty hack. This switch is wired in with the switches that detect the head, so I can hold this, and if Matt Pat's head is about to get bonked by the robot, I can hit it and the robot will stop and continue on. I got through a dry run haircut with a little bit of help from the override. I only had to hit it a couple times, but without it, we'd ruin the haircut. Time to pack it up and fly to LA. Talk about just squeaking through. The main reason I agreed to build this and fly out here is that it's for a really good cause. It's a charity live stream for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. They're doing really good work to advance cures and prevention for childhood cancer and other life-threatening diseases. My hope is attempting a robotic haircut on MatPat will generate some interest and raise some money. It's all for a really good cause, so if you have the means, please consider donating. It is the day. The robot was giving me a ton of problems last night. I rewired stuff. I fixed some serious software problems. I think it works now. We're going live. A month of hard work and lost sleep coming to a point. Please, robot, don't fail on me now. Keep your hands, feet, and head inside the ride at all times. <laughs> People have asked me if the robot really talks. Of course. My job in the moment was supposed to be an entertainer, but my secret job was to make sure the robot didn't crush Matt, and I almost failed. Did they put product in your hair? It's really having a hard time uh, sucking oh, your hair into have. the tube. Oh no, is that bad? Oh yeah, your hair is like a brick. Give movement. it a little tussle. I thought the robot was struggling because the hair was too stiff from whatever product was in there. <laughs> but I realized later that whatever was in there made the hair clog up the vacuum system. I really wish I would have foreseen that, but I never would have. It was still really fun and a bunch of money was raised for good cause, so I'm gonna call it a win. Uh, everything but the haircut, that was a fail. You don't wanna go toward the mirror right work? now. We saved attempting to cut the St. Jude logo into Matt Pat's hair for the very end. Cutting the logo takes a page out of old school TV technology. To produce an image, an old school TV scans out a point of light very fast down a series of lines. As it scans out the lines, it changes the brightness of the point of light according to the image that it's trying to display. And doing this with a haircut robot is very similar. We can scan out a series of rows with the trimmer, and instead of brightness, we can adjust the length of the hair. I'm going with black and white. Either there's hair or approximately no hair. I was really happy to be saving this for the end because the odds of it working were very low. The trimmer is too stiff. If it doesn't approach your head perfectly perpendicular, it won't sit flat against your head. When that happens, it just doesn't really cut very well. I was willing to settle for a faintly discernible outline. This would have been straightforward to fix, but there just wasn't enough time and I had to focus on the haircut. The show was running over time, so we started the trim, but then cut it as a cliffhanger. Which is perfect for me because it didn't seem to be working very well, and this is a way for me to get off scot-free. Although I guess I'm telling everyone that right now. Uh... I would have loved to have seen a totally sick fade and a logo cut on the live stream. That's the nature of doing it live. As they say, there's plenty of more hair in the sea starting with mine and my brothers. Don't worry, we're gonna get a logo cut. Although before I let the robot go to town on me, I wanna fix a couple things. The first thing I wanna fix is the don't kill Matt button. I just don't like it. I'm replacing the switches with a big plate trigger. The way it works is if anything pushes on the plate, it triggers these switches and there's just no way to hit this without it going off. And the other problem to fix is the logo trimmer being too stiff. I came up with a full suspension mount that lets it move laterally and rotate. Even if your head has a pothole, this should be able to handle it. All right, it's time to do this for real. No hair gel, triple checked. All right, do you want 18 year old douche tuber? Whatever that means. It doesn't matter. I'll go with 18 year old. <laughs> what? Dog mode. He'll thank me when he makes it a poodle trimmer. This machine is a lot less scary than the old one, although it helps that I brought a mirror this time so I could see what was going on. I'm not gonna dwell on this one because it's pretty similar to my previous robot haircut. So overall, not the best haircut I've ever had, but it did cut around the ears a lot better than the last one. Have you ever seen like a redneck kid haircut? It's usually like a mohawk that goes into a giant bushy rat tail. It gave me one of those. I don't know what the deal is. On closer inspection, it just didn't cut there at all. It's a software bug, but it's a long story. It's a little short, but that's kind of my fault. The style is me painting on a 3D head, so I got what I painted, basically. It's great to see that it can cut hair, 
but what I really want to know is can it cut a pattern into your head? My brother's coming over, so I'm going to try to convince him to let me put him in the machine. It just seems really important. Humanity deserves to know. But why? Why do they deserve to know? I don't think you're understanding me. It's for humanity. Well, I love humans. We're going to start by giving him a shorter haircut to cut someone's hair that isn't mine, and so we can better see the pattern that the robot attempts to cut into it. Not a bad haircut. I like the nah, bangs. Considering. Yeah. yeah. Okay, slight technical error. I did the fade the opposite direction of his natural part, and it doesn't want to go that way, like, at all. That's fine. The only thing anyone cares about is the pattern anyway. The goal is to cut this pattern into his hair. It's simple and will probably end up being a meta commentary on the haircut itself. On the scale of Mona Lisa to Just Kill Me, it's looking like we're leaning a little bit towards Just Kill Me, but stuff is happening. All right, let's see how it looks. <sighs> yeah, you can kind of tell. Oh, goodness. <laughs> uh, so it removes some hair. Yeah, I look like I have a disease. Yeah. I need a little bit more humanity. The pattern carving leaves a small amount to be desired. How'd you rank your haircut? The overall general haircut is honestly not bad, especially the fact it's done by a robot. And now when it comes to the shaving of the head, <laughs> I personally would give this a one. The fact that it was done by a robot and I moved my head somewhat, so. It's your fault. However, the results deserve a one. I mean, it kind of looks like it. There's a horrible accident that combined the eyeball and the, and the nose. We're gonna bring in the impartial judge, the wife. Okay, so yeah, from this, I mean side, this side. I'd say like an eight or a nine. How would you rate it now? <laughs> a one also. I see the inspiration, Actually, but it's... Execution was flawed. Yeah. So when you go to a gallery and you look at a piece of art and you say, this thing is ugly. Then you read the story behind it and you say, wow, the story behind this art makes it valuable. It's art. Anyone who says anything otherwise, they just don't understand art. I'm still not satisfied with the results. I realized I still have one more head of hair I can try this out on. My hair. I'm pretty sure the problem my brother was having was that his head was moving around too much. So I made this kind of uh, apparatus, which will hold my head extremely still. The nose hole isn't for breathing. If it's pushing against my nose, then the angle of my head isn't very well defined. And I want this to be rock solid. This has got to be one of the dumbest things I've done, but it is so satisfying when it finally works. So I finally succeeded on my mission and things have happened to my hair. <laughs> the big question is, what do you think of it? Oh my gosh. Um, nice, huh? If you wanted a face on your head, it did that. Sort of is your face right now. What would you rate this haircut? It is creative, but looks dumb. I see why I married you. Okay. A five. I think she's just being nice. Yeah, I'm being nice. So if you're so proud of it, why are you gonna wear that hat? It's cold. I did this image because it was simple and easy to tell if it worked. With a few more tweaks to the mechanics and better software, I think it could do some pretty good images. I need to find something suitable for testing it that isn't my head. I tried carpet, teddy bears, fur fabric, and nothing would work. Hundreds if not thousands of people have asked me to make my hair cutting robot a real product, but it just isn't good enough. You saw what it did to my hair, I just don't really see it. The reviews are rolling in for cuts made here and they're, they're a little mixed. But before I get to those, I need to talk about this video's sponsor. Now you can just skip to the end and check out the reviews if you want, but if you do wanna help support these videos and making future things, checking out the sponsorships is a really good way to help out. Have you noticed that my videos have improved over time? A lot of that improvement has to do with continual learning, which is why I'm excited about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. I try to spend at least 30 minutes a day reading textbooks or watching online courses. Skillshare is geared towards creative topics and they have thousands of courses across web development, graphic design, running a business, and they're constantly adding new courses. And unlike random videos from the web, it's curated and specifically designed for learning. Also, no ads. So here's an example. My video lighting game was terrible. Skillshare has a class called Film Lighting Made Simple by Dan Dan Liu. In less than 25 minutes, I learned the foundational elements of film lighting. Did you know that collecting all the random lights in your house and pointing them at yourself is not a good film lighting technique? Well, I do now, and I also know what people are talking about when they say things like key light and negative fill. 
I've found that continual learning has a compounding effect similar to compounding interest. Skills build on top of skills and you get huge gains over the years. It's a fantastic investment in yourself. It's also a really good way to invest in someone that you love and give them a gift that has actual long-term value. Skillshare is less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. That's less than the cost of pretty much any book. And the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So check it out, build those skills. Future you will thank you, I guarantee it. All right, the moment of truth. What did people think about their cuts made here? If I'm reading this right, Matt Pat would like us to try again. Well, Matt, I would be honored to ruin your hair. What a great review. It's so refreshing to see someone who's authentic and willing to share it with the world, you know? When they talk about firing your customers, these are the kind of people they're talking about. They're totally unreasonable and they'd love nothing more than to see you perish. Nice, another five star review. People love this place. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot and it'll keep you in the loop when I release version three of this robot or whatever other semi-deranged thing I come up with. You can support these projects directly by joining my Patreon. You'll also get some behind the scenes info. And one other thing, I have a new year's resolution. I build lots of stuff, but a lot of it isn't that useful. My goal for 2021 is to make a portion of my projects attempts to solve actual real world problems. The reason I'm telling you this is that I wanna make sure my list of potential problems is as complete as possible. So if you know of a problem that affects people that you think maybe I could come up with a proof of concept for, leave a comment. I'll be keeping track of all the things people say, and hopefully in 2021, we'll have some neat proof of concepts that maybe turn into something, who knows? Thanks.